All right, welcome back. I am Brian from Ross and Runs. Today we are talking about the Topo Mountain Racer. First of all, let me explain while we're going with these bad boys. As I progressively moved up the ladder from half marathon to marathon to 50K to 50 miler, the 100Ks and 100 milers are a little bit different. In the past, I liked shoes with grip that would make me go fast. But those shoes destroyed my feet and I needed to go something a little bit out of the ordinary and attack certain brand names that had a larger toe box. Asked a few friends on what the recommendations would be. These are people that do uh, a lot of big 100 milers, 200 milers, things like that. And Topo was their number one answer. So I was like, all right, let's just go for it. Bucked up, paid a hefty price, I think, for a pair of shoes, but are they worth it? Let's take a look. If I was gonna decide to buck up for a shoe, it would have to have certain qualities to make it worthwhile. As I stated before, toe box. Anything after a 50K, even 50 miler or higher, my toes would cram into here and I would get huge hot spots, blisters, things like that on different parts of my feet. These, I have not. One of the other main qualities that I would be looking at would be traction. Now I think Capo got this one right. This has huge lugs on it, spaced apart nice and evenly to make sure that dirt and rocks don't get stuck in it. It has mega grip, vibram, vibram uh, soles on here, so it really does uh, grip onto slick surfaces. I fall a lot, and in these, I fell a lot less. Uh, the traction on this is definitely uh, good enough for all four seasons on technical terrain. Okay, so the next one would be durability. I think they did a really good job on this as well. If you take a close look at the material on here, it seems almost bulletproof. It has a really good mesh, plastic mesh. It does have some air ports on the side there for breathability and help the drainage as well. So even running through streams, uh, A, good traction. With the drainage port, water came out. Things were able to dry the foot up a lot better. Now the midsoles on them have like three different type of foams embedded into the actual shoe. So it does not have a rock plate because of the three different foams in there. It keeps the shoe lighter and gives a pretty organic feel to the ground as you're rolling over different rocks. Now, even though I'm over 100 miles in these shoes, I still feel as if they're not fully broken in yet. And the durability aspect can help maybe offset the cost of the shoe itself. When I bought these, they were $149.99, which are definitely on the upper end of the scale for me for pricing. As of right now, this is definitely my go-to trail shoe for training and races. 